is just Kok Kayask. Sibel had gone too far for her former bosses. The FBI director handed the case over to the then Attorney General, John Ashcroft. Ashcroft's reaction was extreme. On October 18, 2002, my uh, 10th wedding anniversary, I was informed that the Attorney General, John Ashcroft, had invoked this rarely invoked privilege called the State Secret Privilege. Based on this privilege, everything that had to do with my case was considered top secret, classified, and a matter of national security, which requested the courts to put a stop in any process that dealt with my case, whether or not I was right or, or not. State secrets privilege is an all-powerful political and legal weapon dating from the 1950s. In the wake of 9-11, it was a favorite of the Bush administration. Muller and Ashcroft managed to block Sibel's lawsuits. The message was clear. Keep quiet or go to jail. Gagged in the name of national security, Sibel said no more for two years. this awful awful time so I came to this point that nothing was going to happen and during this time uh, they had established just finished establishing the 9-11 Commission we must uncover every detail and learn every lesson of September the 11th keen to unite the country at a time of conflict the Bush administration agreed to a congressional commission of inquiry into September 11th its mandate included investigating shortcomings in U.S. intelligence agencies that had made the attacks possible. This is the only hope we have. This 9-11 Commission report, they're going to say what's wrong. For example, with the FBI translation units, which a lot of things are wrong. Behind closed doors, Sibel gave the Commission her testimony, once again revealing all she knew. And the White House had just made its first mistake. Condoleezza Rice had just come out and made the statement saying, I don't think anybody could have predicted that these people would take an airplane and slam it into the World Trade Center. To say that we had no specific information, that, that was an outrageous lie. And she's a national security advisor there. And all these people, they report to her, say we didn't have it. So when we came out of one of the 9-11 commission hearings, um, 9-11 family members, they just pointed at me and they said, you know, she's one of those people who was outraged with the recent statement by Condoleezza Rice. And suddenly all these cameras started flashing on my face. It's like, well, what do you think of this statement? And I said, well, that was an outrageous lie. And then for the first time, that made all the headlines. Sybil Edmonds, Edmonds, can you repeat again the information that you have to substantiate? And I gave an explanation. I said, she said we. We includes National Security Advisor, includes the FBI, the CIA, the NSA. That's what we means. And she said we. Sibel's comments sowed the seeds of doubt in a nation yearning for truth. Condoleezza Rice was forced to backtrack on what she had said. As I said to you in the private session, I probably should have said I could have not imagined because within two days, people started to come to me and say, oh, but there were uh, these reports in 1998 and 1999. So that uh, was the, the start uh, of me outside doing it outwardly, doing it more publicly and doing it more visibly. On the 24th of July, 2004, the 9-11 Commission released its report. America looked to it for the truth. But not one of the report's 567 pages 
made any reference to Sabelle's claims. Good morning. My name is Lori Van Auken. On the morning of September 11th, my husband Kenneth was killed while at his office on the 105th floor of the North Tower at the World Trade Center. The 9-11 Commission's report is supposed to provide the definitive account of what had transpired on September 11, 2001. We hope that our thousands of unanswered questions would be addressed and answered. Yet incredibly, we have found that the Commission's definitive final report has actually yielded more questions than answers. That was like, oh, is this what they've been waiting for? Was going to put all the stuff and say what's wrong with the system and have individual accountability. None of them. I want to know. I want to know. Who the whistle blows. Blows for you. What we got truly insulted the intelligence of the American people. Get off the couch. Violated our loved ones' memories. Raise up your hand. And might end up hurting us one day soon. Take a I locked myself in this room for three days and started reading everything line by line. Don't tell me that's just the way that it goes. I was outraged. I need to know what simple efforts know. So do you. National security whistleblowers tried to testify before the commission, but were either not asked to testify or their testimony was only barely acknowledged or worse yet, completely omitted from the record. Take off the gag. They complimented everybody. Take off the gag. Don't let them hide behind their flag. So politicians were very happy about it. Get off the couch. Raise up your hands. It's a war word. Make a One whistleblower that we made sure the commission met with was FBI translator Sibel Edmonds. It's just the way that it goes. Sibel is here. I need to know what civil ethics know so you know. This is just the biggest whitewash, and this is not what they promised they were going to give the American public. There were three holes that I could see in this uh, work of fiction. Um, testimony from people like Sybil Edmonds, uh, the preparedness of our nation and the crime scene that was 9-11 was certainly not addressed as a crime scene. Very disturbing, very disturbing. I mean, you know that when they were supposed to be doing this report on these agencies, and they put it out, and the first reaction of the agency is complimenting it, you know something is really wrong. Sibel's name was now sung in New York clubs. She had become the most famous of all the 9-11 whistleblowers. Thousands of people signed petitions in her support. The former translator became the toast of anti-establishment blogs. Supported by the Vietnam-era whistleblower, Daniel Ellsberg, Sibel called upon disaffected intelligence agents to join her. Around a hundred soon did so. Many of them had been tracking Islamist terrorists before September 11th, but had since been reassigned to the Red Herring of Iraq. For Sibel, it was time to strike back. She set up the first national security whistleblower network. Good afternoon, my name is Sibel Edmonds and today we are having this press conference here as National Security Whistleblowers Coalition. Once you start hearing this name, it's going to become more real to you, the concept of National Security Whistleblowers and who these people are. Edward Costello, former Special Agent Counterintelligence FBI. John M. Paul former veteran intelligence operations specialist, FBI. You know, when you're going to hear people like 20 years of experience, have gotten this many medals, this many awards, patriotic, highly awarded, competent people, and they're being reduced to nothing. Steve Elson, veteran agent, FAA. 
John Vincent, Veteran Special Agent, Counterterrorism, FBI. We were compelled to go public only because the FBI wouldn't listen to us. If nothing happens, there will never be another FBI agent to come forward. And who will suffer when this happens? We all will.